Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us this morning to learn about Pache's newest feature, PCEDA, or the long form, the PCARD Digital Envelope Approval Process. I'm joined today with two of my co-hosts, my co-panelists are Jennifer Salada. Jen, would you like to pop in and say hello? Everyone, thanks for coming today. She is our newest team member here at Cache, and we also have Renee Kitterman, who has been with us for quite some time. Renee, do you want to pop in and say hello? Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you all for taking the time to learn about our latest feature here at Cache. We are very excited about it. We think this is a perfect time to introduce this new feature because it is a P-card digital approval process that is hands-free, meaning that your cardholder will go in and reconcile their transactions, attach the receipts to those transactions digitally, and then it'll move along a matrix that um, we can create for you who approves it next. So it would go to the department head, then it could go to the um, accounting auditor, then the accountant, and then the UPM. It's a very slick it's, you know, in the time of COVID where we're trying to move away from paper, it um, has really been um, a time saver and an answer to a lot of our clients' questions about this. So we are recording this. So it will be available at our YouTube channel at the beginning of next week. So if we didn't get to any of your questions, please feel free to email us at help at and we'll answer that. But during the webinar, please feel free to type in any questions you have at the Q&A down at the bottom, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. And without a further ado, I'm going to turn it over to R Renee Kitterman, who is going to walk you through PCEDA. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. So in order to get you set up on PCEDA, first we're gonna establish your approval matrix. So this is typically what you normally do with paper envelopes. You would just reach out to us, tell us how you would like the order to go, and we would establish that in the background. We would also go in and tag your main approvers, which are typically your auditors, second assistant accountants, first assistants, lead accountants or controllers, UPM and line producers. You would then go in and establish your department head approvals. So if you can see here on my screen, this is a very basic uh, common approval process that we all have on pretty much all of our shows or have had in the past. Here I have it to, whoops, sorry about that. Let me actually change that. Should be department head first, <laughs> then auditor. So as you can see, we can customize it to your needs. If you want the auditor to be first, we could have that. Then that auditor can send it to the department head for approval. That way they make sure that they have all their coding. So, but this one, I have department head. So the cardholder creates an envelope, it goes to the department head. Once they approve it, it would come into the auditor. Then they're sending it off to the UPM. And then final for the lead account to actually approve here. And that just jumped on me. Wow, it is being a little glitchy right now. I am requiring everyone in my group to approve. And I'm also having an order from top to bottom. So when the cardholder creates an envelope, they will be first digitally there. Then right underneath it would be the department head, auditor, UPM, and lead accountant. Over here, the required complete approval before PCE export. So if you're on Entertainment Partners, even if you're on Cast and Crew, you can do that download upload. But if this is checked, you will not be able to export or do the download upload until everyone has approved on your show matrix. And Renee, why is that? Do you, is that just a safeguard for our, well, to make typically, sure everything's... Yeah, studio policies and procedures. So you definitely want to check with your studio. Or if, if they are right now making sure that everyone has fully approved, it also goes for either AP as well. Typically, you don't enter invoices or check requests unless it has been fully approved by everyone on the show level. But again, check with your studio on their policies and procedures. I know that we all have in the past have gotten our costs in and then went back and maybe got the UPM approval or they were off that day on Friday and you're trying to get the cost in before you close the period. 
but obviously we want to make sure that we adhere to your studio's policies and procedures. Simply, if you don't need to have that and it is on, you just reach out to us. If the studio has approved to remove it, then we would just uncheck that box and allow you to be able to book the envelopes before maybe the UPM or final lead accountant approval. What if you have, um, a, what a question just came in. What if you have to have, send an envelope to the studio, the studio uh, finance exec to approve? Yes, so the studio is gonna be in a separate area. They don't need to see every envelope. This is going to be every envelope. This is your main matrix. So department head is specific to that department head, hair is hair, wardrobe is wardrobe. Then auditors will see all those envelopes and UPM and lead account will see all the envelopes. Studio, we set up somewhere else. We tag that in user management. So when you're actually setting up the users, giving everyone access to cache, we're gonna establish that studio approval there. And then in a different area, I'll show you where you could always tag it to a certain card. So every envelope will always go to the studio or you can do it at transaction level. So if you have a certain dollar amount, when that auditor or even if the accountant is in their approval screen, they could actually flag a certain transaction for studio at that time. So you would not establish this in your main matrix. Otherwise they're gonna get every envelope and they're not gonna be very happy. That's done separately. So once we have all of this ready to go, we're just gonna go ahead and hit save. And then you would come in here to user management. We would make sure that we have uh, the auditors tagged appropriately. And for the lead accountant here, I'm just gonna give you an example. On my last show, my controller did not log into Cache, but they agreed to digitally approve envelopes. So I do need to give them a login and actually flag what their approval process is. As you can see here, it does say cardholder. Consider that a general user. That is not an administrator, but we are allowing them to log into Cache and approve envelopes. So I set them up as a very general user, tag them PC approval lead accountant, and I did give them the ability to edit envelopes, which is reconcile transactions. No cards are associated to them because they are going to see every envelope. They are part of that main matrix. Over here is the same premise with my UPM. They also did not log in on my last show, but are agreeing to approve the envelopes digitally. So right here, PC approval UPM. This one, I did not give them the ability to edit envelopes because in my past experience, my UPM never would really change coding. They would always have a conversation with the account. And again, it's customizable. We can set it at your show's request and what you need. And can you change um, if we decide to set it up one way, if the show wants to say no reconcile, but then they come back to us, it's absolutely. just very easy to do, correct? Yep, that's absolutely correct. We can uh, check that box or uncheck it at any point. Uh, the only difference is is that at a cache admin level, which would be me or Sean or Jen, um, in order to change maybe lead account to controller, you wanted to add your controller into that. So you could have auditor, um, final audit, which maybe is the first accountant, then the accountant, then the controller. We would have to actually change this approval role for you, but you have the ability to remove this permission at a general user. If they're an administrator, you need to make sure you have that permission to modify other admins. If you don't, again, just reach out to us and we can do that in a click of a button. So with the studio, that was your question earlier. As you can see here, my studio finance exec is established here. Again, we are giving them approval roles. So I'm using my last show as an example. My finance exec never logged into cache, but are agreeing to approve those envelopes from time to time when I have to send it to them. And again, signing them up as a general user, studio finance exec, and that is it. So the envelopes will come to them, they log in, they approve, they log out. Very simple. They don't have to navigate through many tabs to get to them. Now, this is again a preference. You wanna check with your studio if they would like to digitally approve these envelopes. I have both. I have some studios that are doing it and I have others that are saying, eh, just go ahead and email it to me or DocuSign. It's really their personal preference. So you wanna check with them before you actually go and set them up. So once we establish all of that, now you would come in as a show admin and set up all of your department head roles. 
So right here, I have the username, department head, department head. Go ahead and set them up. If they do not have any cards associated to them, you must give them that general login and just merely give them the department that they are approving. So this example here is grip department. Uh, typically there are some department heads that do have cards and others do not. A lot of the assistants will have all of the shopping and they only approve the envelopes. This is that case here. No cards associated to them. I flagged them grip department head. I did give them the ability to reconcile transactions. So if they'd like to, they could edit the envelope prior to sending it off to accounting. Again, you could remove that if you did not want to give them that ability and they're just going to be approving. If your department head has their own card and they are reconciling their own transactions, you would merely give them their approval role. So right here, this button is now gonna be available, PCE approval, once we turn that on, on your show, the matrix, and then tag the main people, which are the auditor, lead accountant, and UPMs, you will then see this on department heads or any general user. You would check mark that PCE approval and then scroll through the departments. You could even use the filter here. As you can see, it pulled up and you just check mark that and hit save. So now you've given them that approval role. Any envelopes for visual effects created will go to that department head. When this department head creates their own envelopes, it's gonna double stamp it. It'll show that they created the envelope and was also approved by the department head. They do not have to go log in and approve their own envelope. That is redundant. We have saved them time. We did think about that because we are all from production, so we get it. Though if they create their own envelope, it's also gonna stamp them as a department head as well. Hey Renee, I have a question here from Jack Diamond. Uh, he asked, is there a way to set this up so that it doesn't roll out show wide and instead only has a small group that we would roll this out to as a test group for our show? So do you mean in regards to uh, set it to just certain departments or? I would assume, yeah. assume just certain departments. No, because once you have the show matrix on, well, yes, yes and no. When you turn the matrix on and you have department head, you must flag those department heads in user management. If you do not flag a department head, it'll automatically go to the auditor. It'll skip that department head. So essentially, if you leave out certain departments that don't need approvals, it would just go right to the auditor when it, that cardholder created an envelope. But it is pretty much across the board on your show level. So if you don't mind that certain department heads are approving, then you would just not flag them as an approval role. If you do need all departments to approve, then you have to establish that here in user management. And Jack, you're welcome to give us a call or um, we can answer your, your um, send you an email and we can discuss it afterwards. Yes. Um, okay, so you would continue setting all your department approval roles. If there are additional studio people here, I have my production finance manager, we do have to establish them here in user management. Now keep in mind, if you are currently creating envelopes, we just need to temporarily have your card holders not log in. They could log in and see their transactions. They just can't finalize envelopes. We wanna capture everything digitally. So you would just send a nice email to them. Right here, you've got that copy paste, a list of all emails of your users and just ask them, please stand down from creating envelopes until further notice then we would go in and set up your matrix. You would tag all of the appropriate approval roles. Then you would be able to release to them that they could create envelopes. So for your studio people, if you have to have every envelope, let's say for accounting, always go to that studio FE. Once they're established in user management, you come to card settings. And you will all probably see this here currently, there is a studio approval column and a lot of it will say NA. That is because A, you don't have your matrix on, and B, they are not flagged in user management because you don't have the matrix on. Once you do, you can see here my department is accounting. This is the card for accounting. So any envelope created, if I flag it here as Studio FE, will automatically pick it to the studio for approval. So it's gonna go through the show matrix and then I'll also send it to the studio. Kind of a set it and forget it thing. So if you know every single envelope here of whatever you have for department, or a executive team above the line, you could set it here and it will always send it to the studio. If you have those transactions, that's in a different screen, which I'll show you in just a minute. 
but you can escalate transactions up to the studio. But the here is always gonna be for cards. So it's convenience for you. So once we have all that ready to go, envelopes are being created. Let me go ahead and show you um, what it looks like to work through the matrix. So right here, I've logged in it as my department head. As you can see, very simple login, right? This is my grip department. If you remember, no cards are associated to them. They are only approving and possibly editing envelopes. So when they log in, they come right to their approval screen or their other option is to log out. Very simple. So under pending, these are all the envelopes they have to approve. What they would do is they would click on the row there. Here's the cover sheet. If they scroll down, they're gonna see any images attached to it. Um, and again, here, here's a PDF that's attached to it. So at this point, if they decide that they need to edit the envelope, they can hit edit envelope. Right here, if they have access to their own chart of accounts and their own coding, many like wardrobe or set deck, this is where they could come in and actually put in the coding. So if you just type it there and you tab over, also, once I get to the dollar amount, you're still able to split out lines at this point. So if I change this here and hit the add plus sign, it will carry down the remaining amount. Any data that was saved up here will also carry down. And at this point, as a department head, I can tell accounting that this is for construction. Maybe they're splitting costs with another department. So they're saying here at the approval level, hey, by the way, this $5 should be coded to construction. They could save that. And let me just scroll over here. They also have the ability, the ability to delete transactions, remove them off of an envelope. So if I were to hit this little circle here with the X, it would remove this transaction off the envelope. Down below here, all of these transactions that you see are unreconciled transactions. They also have the ability to add transactions onto an envelope. So would this be used a lot? We're seeing a lot of our shows wanting their cardholders to uh, turn in envelopes that match the weekly statement. And let's say a cardholder turned in an envelope and it wasn't matching. Is this where the department head could go in and add the receipts to the envelope or take receipts away? Well, not receipts, but transactions. So, transactions, yes. Yes, um, they would absolutely. So again, if that department head has the ability to reconcile or edit envelopes, this is where they could do it. More so more for the auditors, right? So many of the auditors that are gonna be looking at all the envelopes, they have the ability to now put it towards that statement period range. Um, so if you would come here and just check that box, you can see they're highlighted in blue. Down below is this add to PC button. So if I click that, it's just gonna refresh real quick. It's grabbing those transactions on there. If I hit save all, it will now capture those transactions on that envelope. Again, I have the ability to remove them by hitting the little X here. So if I did that, you can see it went away. Uh, let me just go ahead and close that. I'm gonna kind of refresh there for a second. Back to the edit envelope. So they have that ability to add or remove transactions. All of them down here are the unreconciled ones, not ones on envelopes or already approved. So with this, you would wanna make sure you have all your descriptions there as you go along. Again, approval comments at the transaction level. If everything looks great, hit save. I always hit save just to make sure we're all used to that because we all know that your data can get wiped out by a blink of an eye, especially if there's space haters on in your office. Hey, Colleen, or um, Renee, where do, where do the comments, so the comments print down at the bottom of the envelope? Yep, so right here, as you can see, any comments made at a transaction level or an envelope level will carry with that envelope. It will tell you who made those comments. It'll actually tell you the date and time and what that comment is. So right here, here's that for construction that department had said right here. It's displaying it down here. If I were to approve and continue on, it would just call up the next envelope here. But let me also show you, if I close out of this, I haven't approved anything. It brings me right back to my approval screen. This comment here is at an envelope level. So envelope comments are permanent post-it notes. Transaction comments, the auditor has the ability to go back in and remove those at a later date if they'd like to. But let's just be careful. Let's just say all comments are permanent post-it notes. So 
be mindful, no colorful language. If you really need to have that kind of conversation, you might as well pick up the phone and not actually put it here because we cannot remove comments, especially at an envelope level. So if I were to say test here, and whoops, I need to move my little Brady Bunch out of the way and hit okay. If I show you right here, there's my test one. It is now saved it at an envelope level. Good. Let's go ahead and continue on. We're gonna go back. I'm going to approve and continue. That way you can see it calls up the next cover sheet there. So you can seamlessly approve these envelopes. Let's move on to the auditor here. Now, as the auditor, you can see here in your PCE log, you are tracking where your envelopes are at. You always know who it is sitting with. I can see these are with department heads. These are with my UPM. You will have to come over here to your PC approval tab. This is where you're going to edit envelopes and also approve them. As you can see, you've got a pending envelope here. Same thing, you can open up, see the comments there. You see exactly when that department had approved it. So if I click on that row, it'll give me the same cover sheet. I can scroll down, see all the comments made there. But now I have the opportunity to kick it back if I need to. So once it moves on from that first person in the matrix and goes up, it can be kicked back down. We cannot kick it back to the card holder. That is a side conversation. They are not part of the main matrix. Only people in the main matrix can kick envelopes around. So I'll just show you what it looks like. If I were to choose that, and with my comments saying missing receipt images, please attach and resend or whatever you'd like to say. You can send it back to the department head. With this edit now, as I am the auditor, I have a couple extra options here. I have a new area that says approval department. This is where I can split off envelopes for different department heads to approve certain transactions. So earlier, I can see here that they made a comment that this should be going to construction. So as long as that construction department head has been established in user management, you can now send this envelope to them, but have them approve just this transaction. They will see the whole envelope. So it is important that you do make approval comments, letting them know why they're seeing this envelope. It's the same premise of making a Xerox copy, highlighting it and writing why you're getting this cover sheet. So they would change it here, save it. And now it's gonna be flagged to be sent off to that department head for approval. Mm -hmm. Here's the transaction where you can send it off to the studio. So again, if they're established in user management as their approval role, you can now send off transactions to higher up studio line producers. But again, they have to be established in user management. So if I hit save, now that envelope will be captured and sent it to that person. But remember, you do want to make sure that you have comments here so they understand why they're seeing it. So for cast one, let's just say you want to explain to them why are they getting this envelope. Still, same ability. To add transactions down here, hit add to PCE or remove. If you accidentally remove all these transactions off of this envelope and hit save, you have voided this envelope number. So be very careful when you are adding and removing transactions. Unfortunately, there is nothing I can do about a voided envelope in the matrix. So just be very mindful. My rule of thumb is add then subtract. So if we go ahead and close out of that. Hey, Renee, and, one question that we got yeah. are, um, how are the studio executives responding to this? Um, it's kind of hit and miss, really. Uh, some really love it. And then others haven't honestly even really tried it. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> and I think uh, we're also seeing a mandate coming because everybody wants to go paperless yeah. and digital that people are just going to have to learn a new way of Yep. working around it. Absolutely, really, it really is. So that's why I said early on, make sure you do, do check with your studio and see if they do wanna be part of this. Me personally, I would rather log in and digitally approve something than get my hands dirty with all that paper and paper cuts and ink smudges and everything like that. So it really is hit and miss. They're not negative against it. Uh, they just haven't tried it, to be honest. So. Um, as you scroll down, again, you're going to see the receipt images. If no receipt images are attached, if you notice here, the transaction detail is going to serve as backup. 
So you will have something filled in in the place of it. At this point, you could reach out to the card holder and say, hey, you forgot to attach receipt number one. Can you please go in and do it? If they do it while you're in here and you refresh your screen, you're going to see it in live time attached. So if we go ahead and prove and close this envelope, it has moved off of my pending and now send it to the next person in the matrix. So over here, I'm logged in as my UPM. You can see there's several envelopes here to approve. Once I click on that, they do not have the edit button. Remember, we did not give them the ability to reconcile transactions, edit envelopes. Here are all the comments made that are now traveling with the envelope. Again, they can return and kick it back down so it can go to the auditor or department head for whatever reason they would like to. But if we approve and close, just gonna kick that one on through. And now it's gone to my lead account in here, just refreshing. And again, here's that envelope, same thing. They can now edit the envelope, send it off to the studio if they need to, or kick it back down to the UPM or auditor with comments about coding. But we're gonna go ahead and approve it and just move it on through. So that is how a full envelope goes through your matrix. I'm gonna come back here to my PCE log and show you something that we have here. Once you are on the digital approval, you may have noticed already in your log that you do have a transaction number column, but here it is fully approved. Now remember earlier, if you have that box checked, require all before exporting, it is grayed out. I cannot export these envelopes. In fact, if you're on cast and crew, you do not have that CSV PSL upload. It locks you out from doing that until it is fully approved listed here. So once you export it or download and upload it and you post it into your software, if you come back here to your transaction number, enter it here, and now come over to your download with images, it will actually put that transaction number on that envelope cover sheet. You can see it right here. And you can now download this and save it to whatever file storage you're using, your cloud, um, shared drive, whatever it may be. But you have to manually put that transaction number and it will digitally put it there. This is only if you're on the matrix you are more than welcome to use this here. If you're not on the matrix, it's just gonna stay here as a log for you. You still have the ability to unlock envelopes for cardholders if they need to make editing. We haven't changed that. You're gonna use the receive column, however you would like to use it. Um, and then again, if you are exporting, it will automatically flag this as posted. If you're on cast and crew, then you must actually click post, so it'll mark it as posted. If you unlock an envelope um, <clears throat> so the cardholder has to go in and make changes, does it start over the approval process all over again? No, it does not. No, it's just giving them the ability to add descriptions or split lines. Maybe they forgot to do that. And then that way it'll be captured on that envelope. So when that auditor is ready to export it or download it, those changes are there. So that's really it, guys. If you, I mean, please, if you have any. Well, we have quite a few questions. Oh, boy. So why don't we just dive into those? Okay. And like I said, if um, we don't get to your question, please um, feel free to email us your question at uh, help at cache.com and we will get them all answered. And so our first question is from our friend Vanna up in Canada. She says she loves the PCEDA amazing. If two department heads, uh, e.g. grips, has two department heads, do they see all the cards or can they just see theirs? So if their cards are associated to their login, then they will see their cards. But envelopes though, if you have two department heads, they will see all of the department envelopes for hair or makeup or grip. So if you have an A unit or B unit, They'll have to log in and pay attention to only the envelopes they're responsible for. Hopefully in our next phase, we are gonna be able to differentiate between the two and have it a little bit more customizable between like an A unit or a B unit so where they would only see their envelopes. But currently they would see all that department's envelopes. Our next question comes from Megan and I believe we've already answered this, but let's um, just revisit it. Can any approvers notate questions on specific transactions to take the place of post-its? Yes. 
Yes. It's, if they have that edit envelope button, right? If you give them reconciled transactions and they are department head or an auditor, which auditors are pretty much admins, then they can make comments at a transaction level. Card holders that are even creating envelopes can make comments while they're actually reconciling, but that's only on the digital approval. Okay. Our, hey, Joe, this is from our friend Jody Bowden. Let's say the controller wants to sign certain envelopes, but not all of them. Is that something that can be set up? No. If they are part of that main matrix, it will sit there here in your PCE log showing that it's sitting with that controller. So once you have that main matrix, it does have to go through the full approval process. Okay, here's another question from Megan. Are there digital date stamps for each approval? Yes, um, if we could just show you real quick here. I'll just pull up my cover sheet really fast. As you can see, date and time. So we are very accurate when these people are approving these envelopes. Uh, a question from Sarah G. Is there a way for the auditor to not approve when creating envelopes? Let's say if the auditor is creating an envelope for an accountant or another department. So if the auditor creates an envelope, once they finalize it, it's gonna already stamp them as the auditor finalized it and approved it at the same time. It's that double stamp again. Okay. Um, if an accountant makes account code changes after an auditor has approved, is the auditor alerted to those changes when the envelope is returned fully approved? So if the, the accountant makes changes and then saves it and sends it back to the auditor or just makes the changes automatically? Was just that the probably question? probably makes the if changes just automatically. Make changes. No, it will not notify the auditor that changes have been made. Um, what you would probably want to do at that point before you were going to export it is you could call it up here like I am on my PCE log and look at any coding changes and make sure. If they were to send it back to the auditor, then of course they would be notified. But if they just save it and approve it, there's no notification that goes out to the person that coding changes were made. Here is one regarding um, the images are what they have taken pictures on via the cell phones. Okay, let's. Um, how do you attach images to transactions? If you could just cover that very quickly. Yes, two ways. So um, again, you have to have a login to cache. So you got to make sure that if you are a cardholder, you reach out to your accounting department. You're going to create a password. And you can either come in here to transaction reconciliation. If you look right here, here's a receipt column. And if you click on that, you have the ability to add it. And it could be from your computer. So if it was emailed to you, it could be a PDF. But the best way to do it is also download our app. So while you are out shopping and you take a photo image through our app, you can either save it for later, attach for later and come here to transaction and reconciliation or five minutes after that transaction is pending, you could attach it in real time through the app. So you're actually saving yourself time. So it's either the app or through the URL. Is there a preferred method that you're seeing? Personally, I think more the app, honestly, because it's convenient. I mean, let's, let's face it, we all are addicted to our apps, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Do approvers get an email alert to approve or is it up to, the, to them to log on to cache periodically oh. to see envelopes? Great question. Um, 9 a.m. Los Angeles time, any approver that has pending envelopes to approve will get a gentle email reminder. In the future, we are looking at customizing this. So it'll be up to the show admin. They could have it once, twice, five times a day. Currently, 9 a.m. Los Angeles time, if there are pending envelopes for any approver, it'll just get a little email reminder. But you can log in anytime during the day. You do not need to wait for that email. If you just log in, again, if you're a department head, you're gonna come right to your approval screen depending on your permissions. If you are the auditor or lead accountant, you just come to your PC approval and see if you have pending envelopes there. Who do we contact to get this started on our production? Uh, you just email help at cache, uh, and then they would route it to either Jen and I, 
and then we would be able to either jump on a phone call with you. We do have a form that we have created, so we would be happy to email it to you. And it'll just show you how you want your approval workflow, right? Department head, auditor, final auditor, accountant, controller. It just lists out how you want your approval matrix to go. And a little bit more information, send it back to us. We'll get you set up within about five seconds of that. And then we can also help walk you through how to tag a few of your department heads as well. Uh, Somebody is asking what happens to the actual receipts. Isn't that basically just up to your studio policies and procedures? Yeah, the physical ones. Um, I will tell you several studios are telling people to just hold on to them, you know, kind of put them in a file cabinet or manila folder just to hold on in case. Um, but there's so many people going digital. But again, check with your studio policies and procedures on that. Uh, our friend D Dana, this is very cool. Do you envision the auditor printing the envelopes for filing? Asking because most studios require that you stamp the individual mm -hmm. receipts paid. So I'm wondering if there is a way to do that digitally. Thanks. So unless you have a, a Adobe editor or a PDF editor to stamp it paid, then you would have to download them. Typically, I would recommend go to your PCE log. You see all your maybe posted envelopes here that you marked posted or approved, and then you would just download it with images, and then you can print it out that way and then mark them paid. But if you have that Adobe editor or PDF editor, you should be able to download this and then stamp it digitally and then save it to your shared drive. And I think a lot of the paid is just based, is mainly used for petty cash, right, instead of P cards. Yeah. Um, I did find that some of the studio policies do still require them to stamp it paid because it's a receipt, um, mm. you know, but who knows? It may be changing now. Uh, let's see. Add it, um, is there a way to review just the approvals from your lead accountant in UPM organi organized or sort on a daily basis or date basis? So of who's approved what? Let's see, is there a way to review just the approvals from your lead accountant and UPM? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I think the only way that you would be able to do this, if you go to your PC approval, you could come here to all and you could actually type in maybe your accountant's name. But if I say lead right here, do you see it says accountant, lead accountant? It'll show me the day they, they actually approved it, but you would have to filter through that. So currently we do not have a report that you could run to see where just your accountant approvals and just your UPM approvals. You would have to actually use our search filter in your all PC approval tab. Okay, let's see. Uh, where do peeps get the app for receipt capture? You can get it on the Apple store or on Google Play and just download it. You can also go to our one sheets and forms and we have a great uh, video that walks you through um, capturing receipts. Mm -hmm. Yep, number 12 and 13 right here. And you yes. can see that little video right there. Let's see. Um, our friend Vanna, can you show us how the um, yeah, we don't actually have app, um, access to the app right now, Vanna, but we, um, if you'd like to give us a call, we can walk you through that and, and show you how to do that. Once all approvals, our friend is asking, once all approvals are completed, what happens to all of the comments once the envelopes are uploaded to PSL? Uh, so the, right. Comments will not travel into your software, so you don't have to worry about that. They're just going to be on the cover sheet or next to that transaction on the cover sheet. Um, have studios required hard copies of envelopes and rece um, receipts submitted by crew as well? Uh, again, you have to check your own studio policy and procedure on that. I do know that they have some studios have kept that, but many are getting away from physical paper. Yeah, we're seeing the majority of our um, clients that are using this right now are not, it's all digital. It's no paper at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, Megan is asking, are we providing user support for crew? Absolutely. We'd much rather have um, crew members give us a call and ask us the process and help them out than have them get upset um, with the process. 
Yeah, I actually just helped the department head this morning. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think we, have you found that receipts and image from, um, from versus original is acceptable when being audited? Yes, we have. We've actually ran that by several studio internal auditors and they all said they do accept those. But once again, it's up to your individual studio what they will accept. We also have seen it um, for state incentives. They also accept those as well. Uh, can the app follow me from show to show? It, it's based on your login. So if that new show does give you access to it, then yes, it will be linked onto your app with your existing login, or if you had to create a new login and password, you would be able to have that app. Let's see, some of my wardrobe receipts are two feet long. <laughs> How are these supposed to be scanned and attached? Um, what I have been advising people is to take sections of it, right? So you got kind of like the top and make sure you kind of overlay to the one part you finished at to start it again. And then you can upload multiple images to one transaction. So when you're over there in transaction reconciliation, when you come here, you have the ability to add multiple images. So you just hit add receipt image and then save, add receipt image and save. And so it would stack in order from that. Let's see. Uh, can you show us the top sheet of a fully approved envelope, please? Yes. So Does something here. signify that the LP has signed off, for instance? We do not use PSL or EP, so we aren't able to export envelopes that way, but would still require signed off envelopes. So yes, if you're still on the digital matrix, because again, it's just for approvals and not really exporting and downloading, but when it is fully approved, as you can see here, I've marked this as posted. Um, when you come over here, this is your PDF you have with images or without, but I'll just show you what the cover sheet looks like. Right here are all of the approvals. So you can see them digitally approved, date and time. So of course your line producer would have to be set up in user management in order for them to show here in their approval. Um, here's a good one from our friend Colleen Martinez. Can more than one person be the auditor approver if we have two or three people in accounting working on all the cash envelopes? Yes, absolutely. Um, so again, they would all log into their PC approval tab and just pay attention to the envelopes they are responsible for. So as an auditor and part of that main matrix, you will see every envelope in there. But again, if you're just handling wardrobe, then just find your wardrobe envelopes. Uh, rule of thumb, that again, to help you save time when you are over here. Um, as you can see, departments here. So if I were to type in grip, then it would shrink it down to just the grip departments that I am paying attention to. It will also show here in your pending as well. You have that search bar. That's so going to help save you time. Uh, any plans for an app for approvals? Not at this moment. Okay. But you can approve um, if you like the UPM has a I, iPad, they can log mm -hmm. in and, and approve that way, correct? Yep, absolutely. Or even on your phone, it's a URL. You just log in to our website and you can actually approve that way. So you just have to be able to log in through the URL. Let's see. When the UPM or lead accountant goes to the PCE approver approvals, does he only see envelopes that he needs to approve or are all the others that have already been posted showing? Uh, so with the PC approval, it is only for that approver. So they will only see the envelopes that they have to approve. Approved will show the envelopes that they approved. So again, if you have two or three auditors, when they come here to their approved, they're going to see just the ones that they approved. Um, and then all would show the status of who it's sitting with right here, pending approval, no approval, department head and auditor there. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mike Ravel asks, so does P card auditor need to go back and forth between receipt and the cover page? So if they're in their editor, yes, you would have to actually save and close out. Now, what I am recommending that 
many of us might have split monitors right now. So if you would go to your PCE log first, download that cover sheet and have it up on a second monitor where you can see all the receipt images, then go to your other monitor and in your PC approval, you can now edit it as you're looking at the receipts. If you don't have dual monitors, I still recommend downloading the, the envelope from PCE log and then just calling it up while you're in your editor to look at the receipt images. We are working at reinstating to where you'll be able to download it while you're in the actual approval tab. Um, but we have to reinstate that it's a little bit bigger build than we initially thought. Let's see, can an envelope just be sent to the department head and then stop there if production doesn't want to proceed with the cache system yet? Yeah, I mean, yes, we could set it to where it's just your department heads are on the matrix. Um, let's see, somebody else is asking, can a show opt out of this? My team is in the office full time and not paperless. Mm, we can, um, we just need to make sure that over here in your log, everything must reflect as approved here in the status. Once that is done, again, reach out to us. We can remove it from the matrix, but you're gonna need people to not create envelopes temporarily because if one sneaks in, and then we remove it, it's still gonna get stuck in limbo. So you wanna make sure that the status reflects all envelopes are approved, ask your crew not to create envelopes, contact us, and then Jen and I would be able to get you removed off the matrix so you can go back to paperless with the signature boxes. And I, I think also um, this, is not, this is not the default for cache. We will have to set it up for you. So yes. if you don't wanna set it up, we just, it's, it's still gonna always be the, the regular cover pages. Mm -hmm. Let's see, a uh, question from Susan. Can you do a hybrid of electronic approvals and manual approvals, i.e. someone working remotely using the electronic approval, the people in the production office physically signing? Um, not really, because your status is always gonna show that it's maybe sitting with the auditor or lead accountant. So we can't just keep it to where it's only a few little people here and there. It's not that customizable. Remember, it's the main matrix. So if you have that department head, auditor, lead accountant, all the envelopes are gonna continue going through the main matrix, regardless mm -hmm. if you have some that you want manually approved. And we're seeing a lot, you know, a lot of our shows don't wanna print out the top sheet and all the receipts because they don't wanna, you know, have a lot of people touching that paper. So they prefer going digital hands, mm -hmm. hands free. See, we got a comment from our friend Kathy. So this is a great way of using cache to store the envelopes until the end of the show as it eliminates the need to print hundreds of pages out on a daily or weekly basis to send for approvals. Are other shows considering this? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're seeing a lot of shows um, not even printing out the envelopes at all. It's all being digital and then you can um, restore the envelopes indefinitely for you in our system, but then we're seeing a lot of other shows um, actually storing it into whatever they're using to store their, um, you know, how you have you used to have to scan things that they're just using these as the backup. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm finding, this is from Jane, Jane. I'm finding the quality of the images that are uploaded currently are very difficult to read. Is this because they're not using the app? Could be. It could be that they may need to uninstall and reinstall the app. It could be the clarity of their phone. Um, I know that older phones don't take the best quality images. It could be several things with it. So our, our first recommendation is, A, what kind of um, phone do they have? And B, try down, um, uninstalling and reinstalling the app. We are more than happy to beta test any images that we need to. So if you would like to email it to us, we can actually try to attach them and troubleshoot if it is something that is occurring quite often. Um, but typically it does have to do with either the style or how old their phone is, or even sometimes how they're taking it. Uh, here's, I think this is from our friend, Rob Cable. When a user and or department head is inputting the account for a transaction, can the series or subfields be locked while leaving the account and set editable? 
we, yes, we could set what's called a default. So we can't lock it to where no one can actually enter in there, but we could set a default. So if your series is always zero, 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 we could autofill it. So every single time we'll say zero, zero, zero. Uh, on the last example of the top sheet, I see in the approval section, some of the approvals are listed in multiples. Is this to show it was bumped, approved, and bumped? So show them, oh, um, which, I'm sorry, which envelope are you talking about? The comments or the approvals? I think the approvals that you saw, maybe it went back and forth a few times. It could be. Um, this one is not, I would have to find what envelope we're looking at. So and yes, it will kind of keep with that if you were kicking it back with it. Do you know which one that was, Jen? That might just be that because we have the department head named department head, it looks like it's it's stamped multiple. Times. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Don't pay attention to how I set up in user management. We did it to make it easy for us <laughs> to demo it. It'll say the name of the person that you established in user management and what department they are, and it'll only be stamped once each time. Yes. Um, this is from Laura. Does Cache have a missing receipt form that can? be attached to a specific transaction to get a get account and UPM approval instead of sending that form separately via Adobe sign and then embedding in the envelope? Uh, no, we do not have one. Um, I actually had to create one on my last show and I'm sure Jen and Sean also had to create what one as well. What we're seeing a lot of people do, Laura, is when you go into the transaction reconciliation and there's, you can go in and click on the little I button. Mm -hmm. That is the information that we get from the credit card processor, Calm Data. People have been printing that and using that as a, um, a lost receipt. That seems to be sufficient because it's all the information that is coming directly from the credit card processor. We also see people using those for, um, like if they use parking meters. Mm -hmm. I was going to say uh, telephones, but you know. That's just aging me when you have to get <laughs> PA's quarters. <laughs> and these will load if there are no receipt images attached. They fill as a backup if you choose with images. Um, let's see. You have mentioned the ability, this is from Dana. You have mentioned the ability to flag certain dollar amounts for studio approval. Can you go over that again? For an example, any purchase over $500. Um, it's actually not set at a, a transaction, or I mean, at a dollar amount level. That is done when you're in your PC approval here. So let me see if I can actually kick one off here. Hold on just a second. You would have to flag it at a transaction level. We can't set dollar amounts. Let me just get to my department head really quick. So as soon as this sends it now into the auditor here, when you're here at edit envelope, you would have to manually find that dollar amount and then flag it to the studio approval. We don't have it customizable yet to where it'd be at a transaction level. I mean, at a dollar amount level, you would have to actually look at that dollar amount and then actually change it over here in the transaction to who you need to send it to the studio. Let's see. Uh, sometimes we need to make notes or run tapes on the actual physical receipts. Is there a way to do that in cache now? Or do we have to download those receipts, edit them, and then re-upload them? You currently know you would have to download them, edit them, any, any notes you want to make on them, and then reattach them. Let's see. Thank you. How common is it to go by production week ending versus statement dates for envelope activity? Week ending. Um, I mean, I would just, me personally, I didn't never really had them reconcile against the statement. I just said by every Friday night, I want all your unreconciled transactions in. And I didn't care what the date range was as long as I can get my costs in. Let's see, Dana is asking, can we 
in PCE logs the envelopes that have not been exported? Yes. So let me close out of this really quick here. Over here in the log, if they've been exported, they have an X. If they have not, then remember these boxes are grayed out because they're not fully approved. And that is that permission that we did make sure was checked. Um, this one doesn't have an X either. So that would say that this one's ready to export. As soon as I click that, now I can export the envelope. So you just wanna double check the X is here. Let's see. Um, how do you attach, this is from Megan, how do you attach images to a transaction? Are there digital date stamps for each approval? Yes. Are you providing user support for crew? Yes. So can either Jen or Renee, can you touch on how to attach a receipt, a digital receipt? Yeah. So with that, when you're in transaction reconciliation, if you're using it while you're actually creating the envelope, here you have the receipt column. So if you were just to click on that camera icon, you want to hit add receipt image. If you had it sent through your computer or you emailed it to yourself, you would upload the image from computer. As you can see, if I choose this one, it'll just take a moment. There's my image right there. Um, or if you're using the app and it's saying attach later, there's going to be an option that says attach from receipt bucket. It'll show right under here so that you could click that and then search what you did on the app and then attach the receipt that way. Or if you are using the app, like I said earlier in real time, five minutes after that transaction is pending, you could take a photo image of it and attach it straight to that transaction in the app. Thank you. Let's see, this is a good question. Are you able to create parallel approval levels, UPM and accountants, as first come, first serve, for example? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we would have that in the matrix to where we could either have it be department head and then auditor, and then have a second group we would create, which is just lead accountant and UPM, and we wouldn't have it ordered. So as soon as that auditor approves that envelope, it'll send it to the UPM and lead accountant and they can log in and approve whenever they want to. They're not waiting on one or the other. Uh, can I group all of my approved envelopes together before sending to the accountant and UPM for approval? No, once you, you have to approve each envelope one at a time and then it would instantly go to them, the next person. So it wouldn't be like a batch, like you're typically used to shoved in an envelope. It's once you approve it, it sends it, approves and sends. So not at the moment, um, but that is actually a really good point. I'll make sure I make a note of that to see if we could do uh, batch approvals. Yeah. Uh, did you add the transaction for the envelope in the PCE log after exporting the envelope or does it sync automatically? The transaction or the receipt? It says transaction. You would have to add the transaction number yourself manually. When we are auditing, how do we add the transaction page image along with a receipt? Um, it That will show up automatically if there's no receipt attached to it. Oh, the transaction detail. Yes. Yes, if you are doing a view with images and no receipt images attached here, if you could see here in the receipts, uh, the black camera means that there is an image attached. The green means that there are no receipt images attached. So since there are none, it's going to automatically grab that transaction detail as backup. Let's see, this is from James. What is the consensus about the original receipts? What happens to them since they are being scanned? You'd have to double check with the studio on that. I know um, a couple of studios that I've spoken to, they're asking their cardholders just to hold on to them. And then at the end of the show, they may request them. If they do not, then they have the ability to shred them or dispose of them however they'd like to. Uh, let's see. If we wanna add the transaction page besides the receipt copy, how do we do that? We answered that. What if we want both? You would have to 
to upload it separately. Mm -hmm. Okay, we answered that. Sorry, you guys, I'm just seeing what we, um, if we've missed any. Okay. Is there a way to add or remove free fields? Yes. Yep, you would just email uh, help at cache and then uh, one of us would be able to find out exactly which free field either you want hidden or fully removed. Um, but we may ask to uh, a little bit more information just to make sure that it's not needed, if, especially if you're on entertainment partners. Let's see, when the department head deletes a transaction, what happens to it? Does the cardholder get notified? They don't get notified, but what will happen here is the cardholder, once they come back into transaction reconciliation, that transaction is going to be highlighted in blue. That indicates that it was removed off an envelope and it's ready for it to be re-reconciled on a new envelope. Uh, let's see. Let, we have time for, I think, one or two more. Uh, does a department head have access to the fully approved envelopes as codes can change during the process? Yes. They would be coming here, um, right here. This is the department head. They would see all. So at any point they could come over here and view. Right here you can see this is a fully approved envelope and they have access to look at it and see any coding that was done. And again, any comments made as it traveled through the matrix. Let's see, this is from our friend Donna. Hello, Donna. PCE log gets big. Is there a way to filter so posted doesn't show so you can see what's still awaiting action? Um, you can. You can either, there's little faint arrows here so you could sort in alpha order or download Excel. Uh, currently, we are working on filtering this out so you could choose it by department head or approval role, but you have all approved or posted. So if you are looking for something specifically, you could use these little filters here in the status column or do a search, type in maybe UPM if you're looking for any envelopes for UPM. As you can see, it shrunk it down. Perfect. Well, I think that about wraps up our time here. We all want to thank every single one of you for showing up and learning about uh, PCEDA. Like I said, if you have any additional questions or would like a one-on-one -on -one with any of us, please email us at help at cache.com and we will make sure we get to you. Or if you have, think of a question after the fact, um, please um, email us that as well. And we are going to make this um, video available on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and look at it and, um, and like I said, if you have any questions, please contact us. And we're so um, thankful for all of you um, joining us today and being Cache users. So thank you very much. And we look forward to doing another one of these real soon.